All right, first and foremost, we give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shimmy Howard Shai. This is Situation Room Trey O. All right, Situation Room Hot 30, Dirty 30. 30 for 30. We got my my highly esteemed colleague, uh, Elazar Baloya, a.k.a. the Grilly Hebrew. He is joined aside by Shakar Hassan Karab. All right, and uh, we got a nice, nice situation room tonight. We're going to go into it. We're going to put this thing to rest, to bed. We're going to get you brothers cleaned up, literally. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, without further ado, we're going to hop right into it. You see the title, Are Dreads Lawful? Let me. Matter of fact, let me share this because there's some people that needs to hear this. Quite frankly, I'm sick of talking about it. I am sick of talking about it. Uh, let's go ahead and share it. Share it, Saints. Share it, Saints. We're going to be doing some live streams on this page. We're going to be doing some live streams from this page. So make sure you like share subscribe super chat um yeah like share subscribe super chat please by shimmy i was shy and brought a thumb to the nation of yashara let me send this out. All right. So, without further ado, let's 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 get right into it. We've we've heard that it's lawful. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Yeah, Shalom, Shalom. We're gonna be dealing with this uh, much talked about subject in Israel through the Spirit and the power of Yahweh by Shemi Yahushua. We're gonna go into the Bible in depth into the language, and we're gonna find out if this hairstyle that so many of us have taken a liking to is a lawful, mm -hmm. etc. Right? Go ahead, Salah. Like. That's right. That's right. So. The first thing we want to do is prove that it's a a heathen custom. It's not an it's not even a Shemite custom. Because the Lord said we can eat from certain of the trees in the garden, which represent other nations and people. But dreadlocks are not even a Shemite custom. The originators of dreadlocks are actually from Japhetic stock. And we're going to prove that. That's one. So not only are we following a heathen custom, uh, but we're going to show also that it's in the law that you have to have your hair kept. You have to keep your hair kept. And, you, and, and you're only, when you have leprosy, that's the only time you're supposed to have dreadlocks is if you have leprosy. And we're going to prove that emphatically through the spirit power you have by some shot. To my brothers out there with dreads, to my sisters out there with dreads, I still love you brothers and sisters dearly. It ain't no love lost, but we get asked this question a lot. So we decided to go into it through the spirit power you have by some shy. All right, so let's just prove a couple of facts real quick, right? Some people say that dreads, let me share my screen. Some people say that dreads, uh, hold on, let me see something real quick. Let me click it on here and then go back. Now let's see if this works. Okay, there we go. So some people say dreads started with the Indians. We can't see, can't see your screen. Yeah, it's, it's, it should come up now. 
You see it now? There we go. Yeah. Okay. So how do how did you uh help me to, to zoom in last time? You gotta press control in the in the in the plus button. You sure it wasn't control and command? I make command in the plus button, so like it. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so a lot of brothers they they think the the Indians started it with uh, with Shiva, with the god with the god or goddess Shiva, whatever that goddamn androgynous god that they serve Shiva, is. A devil. That devil with the dreads. It clearly has dreads, but this predates. See, Hinduism didn't start until uh, about nine hundred BC, eleven hundred BC. With the Upanishads um, and all their other texts that they have, right now, as we see, and these sources are from um, Combats of uh, Pol Polikov, Michael B. Combat Sports in the Ancient World, and also um, the Guiding Shadow Sidewalk Edition, Archaeologist Christos, right. So this is the archaeology that they found. Um, it says some of the earliest of dreadlocks date back as far as 3,600 years to the Minoan civilization, one of Europe's earliest civilizations centered in Crete, right? So, um, and that's by, oh yeah, the, 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 the archaeologist, the the archaeologist rather, source, the guiding shadow. Right, so this is a piece of archaeology. We always say here at the Sakari, pottery does not lie. All right, the potteries are what we call pottery is what we call eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses to these accounts. Right, so it says some of the earliest depictions of dreadlocks date back as far as 3,600 years to the Minoan civilization. So if we're going back on this on this time clock on this calendar, then that's about sixteen. Wait, what is that? That's sixteen hundred BCE. Right here, it'll tell you. Over here, it'll say young boxers with long dreadlocks depicted on a fresco from Ekrateri, e e e modern Santorini, Greece, sixteen hundred to fifteen hundred BCE. Now, a lot of people, especially my beloved brothers who still are delusional about Esau being the Arabs, this proves that the original Europeans were actually a darker people. The Japhites were actually a, a, a dark brown black people, all right? And when they got pushed out, that's when the Edomites came in and took over Macedonia. That's a whole nother lesson for that. So. The oldest account we have of locks being mentioned in the Bible of what people think are being called dreadlocks, they're just called locks. The oldest account we have is from Numbers, the sixth chapter, which would be about 12 to 1300 BC. Right. Even if we were to entertain that Moses was actually talking about dreadlocks, this predates that by three to four centuries. All right. So this is the oldest piece of archaeology that we have on this matter. And so dealing from a scholastic perspective, one would have to say, OK, this is more than likely uh, 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 the originators of dread, the originators of dreadlocks. So I just wanted to bring that out first to set a precedent to show the earliest history and archaeology is from the Minoans. All right. And uh, 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 everybody can see that clearly. All right, look it up on your own. So let's click out of there and keep going. One second. Let me uh, turn this phone down so I don't get no feedback. All right. So, so the reason why it matters, the reason why it matters, brothers and sisters, is because if you're in error and you're teaching people to break the least of the commandments, then that could possibly be a problem in the long run, in the kingdom run, should I say, for our people, all right? So 
This is Leviticus chapter 10, verse 6. It says, And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eliezer, and unto Ithamar, his sons, uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, lest wrath come upon all the people, but let your brothers, the whole house of Israel, be well the burning which the Lord hath kindled. So why am I reading this? For one, uh, this is going to determine if it's lawful or unlawful. Now, let's look at this word for uncover. At first, at first, I'm going to show you guys something. I'm going to show you guys something real quick. I'm going to show you guys something real quick, right? Let's go into a different translation here. I'm going to prove that the translators were right on this issue, in which we do use the KJV, but we're not KJV only. It's we do compare other translations, but more importantly, we go into the actual ancient manuscripts to prove the point. That's what we are. We're ancient manuscript only. It's not KJV only. It's all right. So Leviticus 10 and 6, it says, Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eliezer and Ithamar, do not show grief by leaving your hair uncombed or by tearing your clothes. If you do, you will die. So this was a law to Moses and, and to, uh, I'm sorry, to Aaron and his sons that they were not supposed to leave their hair uncombed. But then we have the Nazarite six and five where people think the Lord is telling you to keep your hair uncombed. Right. So let me show. Um, let me go back. Let me go back here. All right. Just to prove a point. And let's show how. Only people with leprosy were supposed to have dreads, according to the Bible, right? So this is the word uncover. And this isn't the word. Let me, let me, let me, before I go to this next verse, let me show you guys something real quick. Let me show you the actual word for like uncovering nakedness, right? It's uh, Strong's H, Strong's H. Okay, there it is. This is the this is the actual word for uncover, right? And once I go to the uncover from Leviticus ten, then you'll understand, right? So let me get out of the NLT real quick. All right, so this is the actual word for uncover, 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 right? It's used uh, thirty four times to uncover, to reveal, open, show, appear. Right, discover. Look at that. That's almost a hundred times it's actually used for uncover. Right? So this is all the time. Uncovered within his tent. God appeared, discovered, approach your neighbor's neighbor's kin to uncover their nakedness. So that's the word for uncover. Remember that. All right. The word gala, gala. All right. Strong's H 1540. So when we go back and we look at what the word is saying in Leviticus, the 10th chapter, and we'll understand, we'll get a better understanding of what Moses is telling Aaron's sons, right? So this word is para. It's not dela, it's para. This is why we say we're not King James only, it's, we're ancient manuscript only, it's, all right? So it says to let go to lose, ignore, let alone, right? Look at this, avoid, neglect. So, so what Moses is saying is that uh, Aaron's sons were supposed to keep their hair kept. And you, you look at the NIV, it says, they're not supposed to keep it unkept or to avoid it or to neglect it or to let yourself go. You know how like you turn around and you're 240 pounds and you look in the mirror or at your wife and you say, and she says, damn, why'd you let yourself go? That's what it means in this context, right? Don't let your hair go. Don't avoid your hair. Don't neglect your hair, right? And let's, we'll prove it, right? So let's keep going to Leviticus 13 and 45 because I said something. I said only lep leprous Israelites or any type of lepers were supposed to keep their hair uncombed or have dreads. What would happen if you uncomb it? You'd have dreads, right? So let me let me move in closer with this so brothers can see it. 
So this is Leviticus 14 and four, I'm sorry, 13 and 45. It says, and the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent and his head bare. And he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry unclean, unclean. So what does it mean to have his head bare? This ain't the word for shave. This ain't the word for razor. This ain't the word for haircut. This is the same word for let go, avoid, or neglect. And what proves this? We can go to all the other translations and that proves it too. All right, let's go back here. And it says, um, anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkept, cover the lower part of their face and cry out, unclean, unclean. Another translation. It's saying those who suffer from serious skin diseases must tear their clothes and leave their hair uncombed. They must cover their mouth and call out unclean, unclean. So not only do we see this in the Hebrew, but we also see it in other translations as well. All right. So um, let me let me go to. Uh, let me close out of here. Now let's go to some of the first accounts that some of our beloved brothers and sisters will go to to try to prove that we could have dreadlocks. All right. So um, this is going to be this is a good one. This is Ezekiel chapter eight verse three. Now we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to this 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 word lock. We're gonna show you why King James use the old English word lock. We're going to show you why he used lock, what he meant by lock, why he translated these Hebrew words into the English word lock. It's very simple. All right. So Ezekiel 8 and 3. If, if, if uh, Hassad or Chief, if y'all want to uh, interject or add, you guys can. Yeah, I, I was going to in a little bit, but um, go ahead, though. I'll, I'll, I'll speak later. OK, come. Yeah, all, all, we're going to open the chat up for these questions as well. Because I know, I know, I know how Israelites are. I know they're going to say, you guys, we worship King James. Why are you guys using the other translations? I already know how Israelites are. But if that's the case, you brothers better be celebrating Easter and uh, believing in unicorns as well. Yeah, and, 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 and the Trinity. And the Trinity. And, and the Holy Trinity, which is jo the Johanian comma. So I'm going to open up the chat. I really want to deal with the fact that people think we have to only use the KJV. So I'm definitely going to open up the chat for that. So this is Ezekiel 8 and 3. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of mind. All right, we see the lock. So the spirit took Ezekiel by the lock. What lock is this? Is this a dreadlock? He, did, did the spirit grab Ezekiel by a dreadlock? Well, let's see what the Hebrew says. So that's why you brothers and sisters got to be a suit. Look at this. That looked like ZZ to me. It is, absolutely. So what is this? Fringes, tassel, lock. Only used two times or, uh, or three times in the whole Bible when it's Numbers 15 and 38 for all you outward external Israelites. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make fringes. Everybody want to wear fringes. Everybody want to wear fringes, right? So the Bible is saying that whatever was on Ezekiel's head, it looked like a fringe. Or it, 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 it appeared to be a fringe, right? So brothers is out here. Brothers know how to make zeet zeets and fringes. How You're do you do that? Them. <laughs> you braid them. It is right here clear in the definition, right? So this is uh, this is just a regular definition of a friend. It says, an ornament border of threads left loose or formed in tassels or twists. So that's what the fringes are, twisties. So what was on Ezekiel's head wasn't a dreadlock, okay? Now, I'm gonna go out of that. Now, let's get to number six and five which me and Elazar were just going over this earlier, the real Nazarite. All right, so if anybody knows number That's six right. and five, 
It's the Nazarite, all right? So number six and five, it says, all the days of the vow, his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair uh, of the hair of his head grow. So again, we look at what the Hebrew is saying because our scriptures were written in Hebrew. So that's where we would get our interpretation of the words being used. This is the word. Per, per, para, para. And let's see what it means. Long hair, long hair, locks. So what is what is the King James saying when it's calling it a lock? The Hebrew is just saying this is a long, a long hair, right? So we go to what King James, King James wrote the Bible in what? Old English. So we're going to see if this old English word for lock meant dreadlocks or if it just meant long hair. Lock, this is uh, online etymology. Lock number one, noun. This is dealing with an actual lock, like to lock your door. Lock number two, noun, tress of hair. Old English, let me go, let me scoot it on this. It says, tress of hair. Well, what the hell is it? Alizar, tell these brothers and sisters what a tress of I know these women know what a tress of hair is. You, you sisters is buying tresses left and right. All right. And, and, and let me tell you something. It ain't dreads. All right. You're mm -hmm. buying them bundles. You're buying them tresses. Okay. Out of Malaysia. All right. Out of East India, et cetera. All right. That's the, uh, you know, your, the, your nice silky, uh, your, your silky body wave hair that y'all be getting, man. Ain't no damn right. dread. Yeah. Your 32 inch wig. There you a go. Tress of hair is the same thing that our women is our women, our sisters is buying from the air of an East Indian man. Weave. You know, a tress, tress of hair. You know, that Korean man. All right. Right. Hey, so the look, same so, thing Goldilocks had. Yeah, the same thing Goldilocks had. I'm a, that's gonna be next. So it says a tress of hair, old English lock, lock of hair, curl. Then no, nowhere in the online etymology of the word King James. Some summon his 70 scholars to translate the Hebrew to means uh, 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 dreads. Look at this. Uh, this is why I wanted you to look up pliant twig in the Bowers Briggs earlier. A pliant oh, twig. Ligos. Yeah, the word ligos. If you can find that in the in the Bowers. I'm look that. Up. Okay. So so we see the word King James used was dealing with a tress of hair, lock of hair, curl. Okay, so let's go out of that. Boom. Tress of hair. Tress. A long lock of a woman's hair. And here they give an example. She was tugging a comb through her long tresses. You can't tug a comb through your long dreads. So that's not what King James had in mind when he was translating these Hebrew words into the English. What we as a people need to understand is that dreadlocks and locks are not the same, period. All right, so let me close out of that. Goldilocks. <laughs> so for the people that think locks are dreads, um, not sure how this hell, hell girl <laughs> got, the, got the colloquial term Goldilocks. She didn't have any dreads. She does have little braids and, and, and plaits and twists on that leprous hair, right? So let me close out of that. Ezekiel 44 and 20. It says, neither shall they, neither shall they shave their heads, nor ruffle their lock. No, I'm sorry, no, I said ruffle nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. So I got a question, and this, this is just a question I didn't even think about. I, I'm not familiar with dreads. If you have dreads, right, and you cut the bottom of them, what happens? What would happen if a lot, uh, if of, you had a a lot of dust comes out, usually dirt? <laughs> that was just a serious question, but I don't know because right here is saying that you know you got to keep your locks trimmed. Not sure how you do that with a dreads, but that was just whatever. 
So the same word here for locks. Let's see if this is dreadlocks or if this is talking about twists, braids, or just long piece, long, long hair, period. This is the same word, para, right? Nor suffer their heads to grow. So same thing we read in numbers six and five. Hair, long hair of a head, locks. Only used twice in the whole Bible, numbers six and five and Ezekiel 44 and 20. Right. Same thing we explained with number six and five. Uh, let me go back. And it says, uh, I'm sure it says yeah, real something. quick. The lie goes. It just means twist. It won't mean twist. Just means twist. That's beautiful. So when you look at the word, when you look at the, uh, the online etymology for the word lock, it goes back to the word ligos, which just means twist, not dreadlocks. Okay, so uh, Ezekiel 44 and 20. I'm going to look at some North Suffer there. Quran to grow law. Okay, so now let's deal with Samson, which Samson was after Moses, and Moses was 12 to 1300 BC. Some people have a, a later date for Moses, even the later date for Moses, which is like 14th to 15th century, it still doesn't predate the Minoans. Who originated the custom of dreads so um i wouldn't i wouldn't argue that point so this is judges 16 and 13. this one is the easiest one to understand it says and delilah said unto samson hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies uh, tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound and he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. So people say Samson had seven dreadlocks. Well, we find understanding through the precepts like we've been dealing with. I wouldn't think that our beloved brother Samson would be unclean like a leopard because the scriptures tell you to comb your damn hair. So Judges 16 and 13 Let's look at this word for locks. It's different than the other two that we have looked at previously. And this says braid, lock, plait of hair. So uh, plaits, everybody know what plaits are. Those are braids. Braids, locks, plait. Nowhere in here does this. Dreadlocks have been out for, like the source said, 3,600 years. It's, e it's easy for King James to use the old English word dreadlock to explain what the Hebrew was trying to say. All right. So we see in the, in the Hebrew that is dealing with um, a ringlet of hair. What's a ringlet of hair? Let's look that up. Let's look up a ringlet of hair and see what comes up. See what comes up. Ringlet of hair. A ringlet is a type of hairstyle. Ringlets are often also known as tube curls or corkscrew curls. It is achieved by wrapping a lock of hair around the length of a thin curling iron. <laughs> Look at that. So this ain't talking about wrapping dreads around a curling iron, my nigga. Who, who wraps their dreads uh, around a curling iron? That that starts sizzling like a mug, burning that dry hair up, or, or can be supported naturally by people with sufficiently tightly curled hair. So that's what King James and the 70 scholars he commissioned were trying to convey with this Hebrew word used in Judges 13, that it's a ringlet of hair, not a Dreadlock. That was beautiful. All uh, praises. So let's go to the next one. <laughs> Psalms of Solomon 5 and 11. It says, his head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. So here's another word for locks. This is different than the other ones as well. Uh, but before we do that, before we go into what this word for locks means, I want to go into this word bushy. What is this word? Because once we once we know what this word bushy means, we can know actually what 
these locks are here. So let's go into it. Bam. So this is the Hebrew word. I'm going to have to. Uh, thal, thal, thal. Let me hear this devil said. Oh, I can't hear him saying it. Okay, there it is. Tal Talim. Okay, the Hebrew word Tal Talim. All right, so this is a Strong's H 8534. It says, Wavy. Can somebody tell me what would be wavy? Some braids and plaits or some dreadlocks? It says, Branchy. Branchy, right? Now let's look in the lexicon or the Strong's definition. It gives a trailing bow as pendulous, right? And it says pendulous branches of palms. This is the lexicon. It says the Latin Vulgate called it a eletha palmarum compared to number two, the Arab of a, of a wicker basket. So that would be the equivalent in the air, but it's still dealing with pendulous branches. So what's a wicker basket? Because whatever his locks are, they're like a wicker basket. Here's a wicker basket. Let me let me just let me highlight. Let me just scoot in on this. Scoot in on this so you guys can understand what I'm just saying. Wick a wicker basket. Let's take a look at what a wicker basket is. Look at this. Weaving a wicker basket. This is how you weave a wicker basket. Look at that. It's just like you're braiding hair. Don't those look like braids? Don't yeah, those look like plaques? If you used to play basketball, you know about a drill called a three-man weave, all right? right? And if you run that in that three-man weave, that's how you braid hair. That's an excellent point. <laughs> that's an excellent point. Also, uh, too, if I may, ahead, when you see the, the pictures of us on, um, on the walls and things of that nature, what do you see us with? We usually have braids, or we know certain brothers may have waves and stuff like that, so... You don't see us uh, having any of these damn dreadlocks, man. You see us having braids or, or braids or twists and things of that nature. Come on, come on. All point, all point officers. So let's move on to the next one. We're going to make this quick. Oh, wait. Dang it. Oh, man. Oh, God. Okay, hold on. Let me go back there. Let me go back there because I needed something from there. This is going to be a Stop bad. asking these questions and start paying. You got people in the chat asking questions that are being answered on the thing. Just watch the video, man. Israel is so crazy, man. Get edified or shut up. That's simple. Y'all be acting so crazy sometimes, man. Because you have such short attention spans. Blackjack, yeah, how about you? Sharp, bro. I thought about the water. Yes, Gad does need help. We're here to help the tribe of Gad on them reservations, man. Okay, so let me go back to this Hebrew word real quick. And okay, so I didn't even get to the lock here. So this is a different type of lock. Go ahead. Okay, so this is this is a different type of lock from the lock that we've seen in the Hebrew from the other ones. And this is Strong's H 6977. Kevet Kevets. Kevet so or, or Kevet sa, however you want to say. It. Excuse me. Uh, a forelock as shorn. So the Hebrew yeah, word, the email. email. I know. G Con, yes. Yes, we're talking to you, nigga. Go ahead. <laughs> we're talking about you, nigga. So anyway, we see what they're trying to convey with this Hebrew word as being translated into the English as a forelock, right? Now, locks, locks of hair. But it's a four lock, lock, locks of hair from there being cut off, air four locks, four locks, and it's showed here twice. And this this word is only used twice in the whole Bible, and my locks will drop right. So what's a four lock? This is a four lock. Let's get what a four lock is, and I just want people to let me know if this is a dreadlock or not. Oh, here's a four lock. This is a four lock. Where's my, where's my, uh, here we go. This is a four lock on this horse's head, a four lock. <laughs> don't, don't look like a dread to me. Four lock, a lock of hair growing just above the forehead. So whatever it, whatever it was, whether it was twists, braids, 
or his natural hair hanging over his head. It's not indicating or denoting any type of dreadlock. And with that, I'm going to unshare my screen and open it up for questions. <laughs> Now, now ask your man thing question. What's up, guys? I got a point. Yeah, I, I got a real quick point. Um, uh, uh, Yehuda Israel, y'all about Shemiel Shabrak and Thawa at the water. Uh, Mary B, y'all about Shemiel Shabrak and Thawa at the water. Sis, for another generous donation. Go ahead. I want to just read this scripture, then I got a point. This is Proverbs 18 and 13. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Mm. That's the problem with a lot, with a lot of y'all listening right now mm. is you're letting your doctrine dictate what the text says instead of letting what the text says dictate what you believe yes, in. there we go let's, let's there's a phraseology for that it's Bring called that it's called the transcription should create the doctrine that's the right doctrine shouldn't create the transcription con exactly yeah yeah your hair naturally locks up if you don't brush it of course con. if you simply don't brush it you're gonna have you ever seen a homeless man with the just a disgusting dreads on his head no, you I know see, why yep, yep, because yep. He, he he's not brushing his hair exactly. he's not taking care of himself Anyone who's taking care of themselves is not going to allow their hair to do that. Well, that's, that's why the Bible it. said that it's it's a sin to keep your hair unkept or uncombed. And um, I just want to read this quick because I, I see it in the chat. I keep seeing it. Um, so I just want to address it because I said I would. This is um, Judges chapter 16 and verse 13. It says, And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. So, so they're going to say, see, Samson had seven dreadlocks. Let's read the same verse in every other version except the King James. Because, again, we don't worship the King James version. Do we hold to it to be the best? Yes, certainly. But we're not going to say that it's infallible. Okay. This is Judges 16 and 13. Let's just pick one in the, in the NIV. It says, um, so while he was sleeping, Deliah took the seven braids of his head uh nlt seven braids uh let's see uh two okay um let's see another one um okay here's another version that says seven braids seven braids seven braids literally every other version except the king james is saying seven braids because that's what it is that's what the lock is that's being referenced it's not some stinking dreadlocks it's braids that's the that's the culture of our people we wore braids not dreadlocks so for anyone thinking that samson had dreadlocks just read it in any other version or simply go to the hebrew word for it but that's that's all um i had because i said i would address it okay he said address the nazarite vow again i mean we've already addressed the nazarite but he said my dress smell good yeah i don't know g-con i don't know man she kind of lives. I know plenty of niggas with dreads, okay? Starting from my father, all right? Dreads uh, typically aren't a good smelling, okay? I, I don't understand. Zeke, Zeke, what do you mean? How did his hair get braided when his hands were bound? The same way anyone's hair can get braided. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's a that's an unintelligible question. The same way my, my auntie used to tell me to sit on my hands while she's braiding my yeah, hair. Yeah, so yeah. I wasn't moving so much. <laughs> Perfect example, yeah. All right, this is a, this is time for questions, brothers. I got about. He said, um, "Lamentations four and seven. Read it aloud and interpret it." Lamentations four and seven. Trick of novelty. I, I got it. You want me to read it? Coming from a nigga, that's a trick. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, 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 go ahead, go ahead, read it. No, 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 read it, read it. I was just playing. <laughs> He said, "Who braided it?" Oh my goodness! Yeah, Delilah we just braided, braided, braided it. I just read it, brother. Come on, man. Come on. If it, first off, it, that that's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read that. This is a uh, Lamentations four and seven. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. So they were pure. They were pure. You, they were pure. They were hey, holy. Hey, now, now, don't break it down. Just keep reading in the eight. Just yeah, I, know, like, I know. I know. I, I, know, I want I that know. nigga to answer this. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, come on, come on. They were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. Uh -huh. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Okay, so they were white like, pure like snow, white like milk, red like rubies. Read. Their polishing was of sapphire. Then they're blue. Right, right. Then right. they're blue. Now watch this. Read. Well, that's if I was, uh, I'm blue. If, <laughs> if I were green, I would die, right? <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 8. Their visage, their, meaning the way their face is, read. Is blacker than a coal. So this nigga, red, white, blue, and black. Right. Huh? 
Now go back to it. Now let's break it down. Okay, Lamentation. Now let's break seven. it down. Read. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. Okay, it's it, it's in talking about their moral purity. Read. They were whiter than milk. Emphasizing moral purity. Read on. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. It's talking about them. Um, no, that's the next one. Ruddy in body than rubies is um it's dealing the youthful, with youthful bodies. Youthful bodies, right? Read. Their polishing was of sapphire. Their polishing, meaning it, they were chiseled, right? So when it's talking about the youth, these were guys that were in shape and had moral purity. Now watch this. Read on. Their visage. <laughs> their what? Visage. But what did their skin look like? Their face. What did that look like? Read. It's blacker than a coal. So they were dark-skinned, chiseled, buff, youthful brothers who were pure in action and heart. Hey, yo, Skip. Skip 336 said, some of y'all here stinks and ain't even got a lot. <laughs> That's right. And they need to wash their damn hair and wash your ass and get some new uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead with you. you so I said they, they found new types of lice in Jimi Hendrix's hair after he died. But in Bob Marley, Bob Marley's hair. Yeah, they had <laughs> that. There was there was there was different species of lice in that in that nasty ass dreads he had, man. That Edomite, Bob Marley. Sick. <clears throat> Okay, I see brothers ain't got a lot of questions. That leads me to believe oh, I'm hoping. The, the dude who brought out the Lamentations verse, he said, why were they black? Sackcloth and ashes and famine. Nice try. Okay, okay, okay. so why were they white? Why were they white? Why were they white? Like the brother said, 19 different species of lice. That's disgusting. They found all kind of bugs in this area. Trigonometry. <laughs> well, yeah, he's coming with the tricks. Yeah, yeah Jamie Israel, absolutely, brother. John, John, you're disgusting. Filthy. Watch out. Watch out. G-Con, your hair is thick. Oh, Sam McGill. Sam McGill. Hey, Sam McGill, aren't you the uh, brother who said you could disprove the 10 tribes? Trichnometry. Trichnometry. That's not what we actually, we all know what Laban means. The question is, you're telling me that when it says that they're black, they're not black, but when it says they're white, they're white. You see how you're picking and choosing? She said, Elijah Davis, no, brother. Just don't let it get to, to a point where you're starting to get Nathaniel animals Elijah. animals in your shit. Yeah, yeah, you can ask questions not about dreadlocks. That's fine. Yeah, Sakari Dallas. Giant eyeball every Saturday. G good point, Roal. She said, did women shave? Did our women shave back then? Uh, It's not documented in the Bible, nor is it forbidden by law. So, I mean, that's all I can tell you. No, it wouldn't be lawful to join the armed forces for a paycheck. Did you, how should I teach in a metri? Uh, that's not documented. It's not documented. Zachariah, High Priest Joshua did though, and, pl and plenty of other people. It was these were like custom. This dude said, "What is Ash Wednesday?" I mean, we've already explained to Zeke the priest. If you're such a priest, you should know that, pal. You can go low with the Clippers, no razor. What is the firmament? Hold on, no, no, don't even. No, no, we're not. We're not. Somebody put him in timeout. We ain't talking about goddamn flat, flat or globe. You're still talking. It's 2019. That stuff is old, bro. Nobody's even talking about the flat Earth anymore. Yeah, Paul was a Nazarite. Yeah, for for a time. Acts chapter 21 will tell you Paul yes. was a Nazarite. Yes, Bray's all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not reading no. Uh, Hadiths. Man, why you nigga? Why you named the priest then? Is there a breakdown for when Jacob wrestles the angel, or was it spiritual? Well, angels can show up to you in manly form, which it says, "Be aware of who you entertain." So I'm sure a struggle, like they say on forensic files, I'm sure a struggle ensued, 
and he got struck on his hip. No one said a clipper cut bald. He said low wick clippers, not bald. Balding is illegal, period. If you're just now tuning in, no. go rewatch it, brother. If you're just now tuning in, rewatch it. A lot of good. June 23rd, Anthony Gonzalez. Okay, so he says. Uh, Derek, yeah, I'll watch him. I'll show you. I thought about the water. Go ahead. First Corinthians 11 and 14. Does not nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, is a shame unto him? Well, Alazar, my lawyer. <laughs> <clears throat> now you gonna put it on me, huh? <laughs> That's good. Here's a quick question: When did Paul become law? I'm just gonna cut right. I'm gonna cut directly to the chase. Paul can't override number six, especially when that's a when that's a something he kept. So when people try to utilize that to this type of argumentation, what you have to understand is it's problematic because he had long hair for a time because he was a Nazarite. See what I'm saying? So he's using an example when people take examples and things that Paul say and try to create laws and commandments by them. And that would literally be the commandment of a man. Go ahead. Uh, okay, email. Cool. You're, you're an idiot. Trigonometry. I just want you to know that. How is Le LeBron's name is LeBron. So there, there's black people whose last name is Dwight. <laughs> right. Or right. white. Does that mean they're white? That's why, yeah. You're out of here, man. Just listen. But get them out. You know, I don't got the wrench with this. Yeah. All right. Let me get it. Somebody just don't even time him out. Hide him from the channel. Everything Paul teaches is not of inspiration. He makes that clear himself. So that's a lie. Well, you know, the brother might, might think that sincerely. I don't think he's hostile. I don't think he's a hostile. I think it's a Christian. I could be wrong. So like it. <laughs> he said Paul is teaching by inspiration. Well, let me let me let me share my screen real quick. First Corinthians seven. A lot of a lot of a lot of Hebrew Israelites and Christians need to need to see this and hear this. How do we believe Esau over the Bible? Okay, this person's a troll. Get them out of there. Thank you. Okay, I mean, I mean, you said First Corinthians. What is that? Seven and six. Star Molik is, is talking about a statue of a person. It's not related to the so-called Star of David. We have videos on it. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Baby six zero. We have a million videos on the law not being done away with, brother. Go check our previous uploads. Hey, shut up, baby six zero. We're, we're trying to deal with a very specific topic. Good, <laughs> good. Okay, so it says. But I speak this hey, so by maybe, permission. Prove we don't know scripture. Go ahead, so like it. It says, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. Um, and then there's another one as well. Tina Israel, would you like a series of lessons Second that are Corinthians eight and eight. A, a, a series of lessons that are just specifically about women who are not married? Yes, it's a sin to sleep with a heathen's wife. That's adultery. Yeah, Second Corinthians eight and eight. I speak not by commandment. But by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. No, no one said curls are bad. Can you explain Deuteronomy 14 and 1 about baldness between your eyes and what that means? I'm a little confused. Well, my beloved brothers and my beloved Puerto Rican brothers, they love razor in, in between their eyes. That's Don't right. do it. Keep your unibrow, brother. Yeah, get rid of Stacey Mobley, please. And thank you. Yeah, Stacey Mobley was a devil as I expected. Um Yes. So yeah, you don't don't take a razor blade and shave in between your eyebrows. Very simple, brother. We'll be well. Yeah, we have a camp in Chicago. Somebody give Salvador Salomon the yeah, email. The email. All oh, praises you, man. You're powerful. Call all you. How about show me how shot? That's a good point, Stro Boogie. We have videos on Deuteronomy twenty three and seven. Again, this is not an open. It's not an open thing um we're trying to just deal with this one thing as far as females females are not commanded not to shave in in their beards and you know things like that like men are okay so you sisters be asking about shaving what they call unsightly hair or waxing listen do whatever you do it's not in the bible y'all can't do that Oh, sorry, it's the wrong house. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> glad, I could, glad I could do that for you, Ernie. Y'all don't know who the hell that is at Deacon's door. He was hung on a cross. A cross is made of wood, so he translated hung on a tree. He was nailed to a cross. All that word hung on a tree. It, he was suspended from wood. That's what that verse means. Tina, man, you got to chill out, man. You got to chill out. Get rid of Stacy Mobley. Why is he still here? No, yes, it's wrong to pray to Yahweh Shai. You shouldn't pray to Yahweh Shai. You pray okay. to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai. You're at you're begging Yahweh to listen to what you're saying and give you what you're asking for because of the sake of his son. Corey Jefferson, leave Tina alone. How about how about doc how about Dr. Uh Dr. Stacy Mobley? Go ahead and uh email us, man, and let's Let's just get in a squared circle and talk doctrine. I don't know how to as far as right now goes, we are about to conclude this live session. Chief Priest Alizar Von Loya, take us out. All right. So uh, with that, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Abba Nawi Yahweh by Shom Ashiach Yahweh Shai. Um, thank you all for tuning in, liking, sub, and sharing, and super chatting, man. We appreciate it. Um, stay tuned on this channel for the lives and more videos. Right here on Public Enemies. More content coming to Public Enemies. Get all praise you. How about Shemiah Rashad? Shalom. Shalom.